Hi, I'm Claudio Martinez. I'm Jose Luis Hurtado. And I'm Jack Sosquez. And I'm Keith Wells. And we are Team 26, and our presentation's name is Life or Death. Our article we found on the New York Times website, we found that a woman in Ireland was not allowed an abortion even after claiming that she was a victim of rape and had suicidal thoughts. On July 2013, Parliament legalized the termination of pregnancies in cases when, when, when the baby and the mother uh, had risks of life, in this case suicide being the risk, the risk of life. Psychiatrists did determine that the woman was suicidal, but the doctors decided that the fetus was viable and should be delivered. After the doctor's decision, the woman, to, pro to protest this, went on a hunger strike. After 25 weeks of pregnancy, she finally agreed to a C-section and with legal proceedings, was forcibly hydrated, and now uh, after the baby was delivered, the baby was reported to be healthy and in state care. Who's involved? Well, the main factors in this article were obviously the women and uh, their unborn children. But also, we found that two countries in, in this article to be major factors. As Ireland uh, has strict abortion laws and England has lesser strict laws, this causes Irish women to go around their laws by simply traveling to England and having their abortions there, just to just not face the hard uh, laws that our Ireland has. Okay. And now, the gray box. Economic and financial frame. So basically, the Irish government is losing capital because people are starting to turn against them. People start to run mobs and protests, causing the government money and causing the Irish population who wish to abort to go to Britain due to the different laws they have over there. Legal and political frame. Um, the Irish government is starting to be questioned, and while laws are being reviewed, people are breaking them with their protests and mobs. There are many campaigns that are getting involved because of the Irish government and the fact that they are basically responsible for the health of its people. Moral and ethical frame. Different councils are starting to call the government barbaric, and it seems logical because it's basically messing with health conditions and putting people's lives at risk. Religious groups are starting to say that the government is basically playing to be God. Leadership and culture frame. Ireland's religion is Christianity in the form of Roman Catholicism, and since abortion is viewed as a purposeful taking of the life of an unborn child, the Roman Catholic Church has consistently condemned abortion. Even though the law allows only suicidal women to abort, which, by the way, the woman was considered suicidal. The obstetrician was who declared that the fetus was viable and that it should be delivered. On core values, this law could be considered a virtue and a vice as well since the baby's life is being saved, but um, the woman is being forced to keep it or get an abortion somewhere else. Ireland's independence law supports the rights of individuals to self-determination regarding the life choices, but when it comes to abortion, psychiatrists and obstetricians make the, life, the choice. All right, in every argument, there, there's going to be the pro-life choice and the against pro-life. So here's a few examples over some pro-life choices. All right, so 10 pro-life choices. We have, since life begins at conception, abortion is akin to murder, as is the act of taking human life. Abortion is in direct defiance of the commonly accepted idea of the sanctity of human life. No civilized society permits one human to intentionally harm or take the life of another human without punishment, and abortion is no different. 
Adoption is a viable alternative to abortion and accomplishes the same result. And with 1.5 million American families wanting to adopt a child, there is no such thing as an unwanted child. An abortion can result in medical complications later in life. The risk of ectopic pregnancies doubles, and the chance of a miscarriage and pelvic inflammatory disease also increases. In the instance of rape and incest, proper medical care can ensure that a woman will not get pregnant. Abortion punishes the unborn child who committed no crime. Instead, it is the perpetrator who should be punished. Abortion should not be used as another form of contraception. For women who demand complete control of their body, control should include preventing the risk of unwanted pregnancy through responsible use of contraception. All right, and as you see here, here's some pro-choice statements we'll go over. Nearly all abortions take place in the first trimester, when a fetus cannot exist independent of the mother, as it is attached by the placenta and umbilical cord, it tells it to depend on her health and cannot be regarded as a separate entity, as it cannot exist outside her womb. The concept of personhood is different from the concept of human life. Human life occurs at conception, but fertilized eggs used for in vitro fertilization are also human lives, and those not implanted are routinely thrown away. Is this murder? And if not, then how is abortion murder? Adoption is not an alternative to abortion, because it remains the woman's choice whether or not to give her child up for adoption. Statistics show that there are very few women who give birth to uh, choose to give up their babies. Less than 3% of white unmarried women and less than 2% of black unmarried women. In the case of rape or incest, forcing a woman made pregnant by this violent act will cause further psychological harm to the victim. Often a woman is too afraid to speak up or is unaware she is pregnant. Thus, the morning, after, the morning after pill is ineffective in these situations. The ability of a woman to have control of her body is critical to civil rights. Take away her reproductive choice and you step onto a slippery slope. If the government can force a woman to continue her pregnancy, what about forcing a woman to use contraception or undergo sterilization? Taxpayers' dollars are used to enable poor women to access the same medical services as rich women. And abortion is one of these services. Funding abortion is no different from funding a war in the Mideast. For those of you who are opposed, the place to express outrage is in the voting booth. To conclude our briefing over abortion and how it affects the business world, um, the way it affects business is that if you have thoughts of suicide because of an abortion, or even if you're a, a man that has thoughts of suicide, anyone that has stress in the work environment, you're obviously not going to be working at your full potential at 100%. And once you start falling behind, that starts making the whole mission fall behind. And then the whole group fails together, the whole business. And the ethics side of the abortion is that, is it right or wrong to kill, even if it's just an infant in the womb? So what our group decided um, as a whole is that it is up to every individual and in every society and state and country and family, etc., to decide on their own depending on the, their background, how they were raised, their culture, their belief system, their religion. I mean, the list goes on. There's so many things that factor how you act as a human being, depending on where you come from. So it's every individual group's uh, decision in the end, if it is right or wrong. Uh, but our group, according to our background and culture, we decided, um, us four, that it's better for the woman, even in the case of a uh, sexual assault or rape, that they wait till the end of the pregnancy, if it's a healthy baby, and um, look for other routes, like adoption, and that's the way we thought. This concludes our briefing. Key takeaways. So us as a group, we just came with one key takeaway for y'all to think about. And we decided that what's right for one person may or may not always be right for another. Also, here are some questions to let y'all think about after you've seen this presentation. Can abortion be ethical and how? Should a country allow their citizens to have abortions outside of their country? If so, what? How? And finally, should a country allow foreigners to have an abortion in their country and why? And this concludes our presentation. Thank y'all for watching. And this is our work side in.